Hi there everyone. In this video, I am throwing open the doors on a brand new era of ESC testing at AOS Labs. I've taken some time to develop a brand new test methodology for ESCs that allows us to look at the performance of these pieces of hardware in unprecedented detail. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through this new test methodology and using it in anger on a bunch of ESCs with BLHeli32, AM32 and BlueJ firmware to see how they stack up. And if that wasn't enough, then we're going to be seeing how all of these ESCs compare against something brand new from FETTEC, a prototype piece of hardware and software for their new SFOC ESC. This is simple field oriented control. We're going to be talking about it a lot at the end of this video, and it promises to be a technological revolution in FPV. Let's not waste any more time. There's heaps to cover. Let's dive right into it. All right, so let me take you through the new test setup. Starting with the prop, this hasn't changed. This is still the HQ 5x4.5x3 V1S prop, and it's being driven by the test motor, which is this AOS Supernova 2207. The Supernova is the highest performing 5 inch motor available in terms of power and torque, so it's really going to put these ESCs through their paces. On the top of the test stand, we have the ESC to be tested, and it's connected to this flight controller on the side. This is a normal F7 flight controller, and this flight controller is doing everything for this testing. It's driving the ESC, and it's also recording all of the data being reported back from the ESC over bidirectional D-shot. And this setup allows us to go much, much faster than we could with the thrust test stand alone. The test stand tops out at about 180 hertz, 180 samples per second. With this flight controller, we can log at 8 kilohertz, 8,000 times per second. This whole setup is powered from a 24 volt power supply that is topping up this 5,200 milliamp hour 6S pack. So these ESCs are not going to run out of power during the testing. We've got three tests. We've got a prop ramp from zero to 100% throttle and back down again. We've got a prop responsiveness test, so stepping from 10 to 50% throttle and back. And then we also have a flywheel test using this 100 kilogram millimeter squared flywheel. And that's what we need this massive capacitor for. It's to deal with the current spikes accelerating and decelerating this large flywheel. So this is the new test setup. Now let's talk through the ESCs that we're going to be looking at. All right, so these are the five ESCs we're going to be testing today. We've got this 55 amp 8-bit ESC from SpeedyB, and that's running the BlueJ firmware 0.19.2. We've got this Diatone Mamba F60 Pro running AM32 version 1.99. We've got the F55 amp Pro 3 from T-Motor. That's running BLHeli32.10. We have this SkyStars KM55 amp 20x20 ESC, Again, running AM32 version 1.99. And we have this brand new prototype ESC from FETTEC running their SFOC firmware version 1.01. .01. Before we dive into the test results, and they are really interesting, I want to let you know about my open door testing policy. It's basically a free testing service for FPV products. You can send me motors, props, batteries, and now ESCs, and I will test them for you free of charge. I'll share the results with you, I'll publish the results on AOS Labs, and I'll make the detailed test data available on my Patreon. This free testing service is available to everyone, and it's only possible with your support. If you'd like to support this testing and help me expand my testing service further, then please consider supporting me, either directly through Patreon or Buy Me A Coffee, or indirectly using the affiliate links you can find down in the video description. If you're thinking of buying some FPV gear, or just making a purchase from Amazon, please click through on my affiliate link. It won't cost you anything. Amazon will make a little bit less profit off of you. And Jeff Bezos will send a few bucks my way to help continue this testing. It's a real win-win, and I would really appreciate any and all support that you can give me. All right, so the first test we're going to look at is the throttle ramp. Here, we are ramping the throttle on the ESC from 0 to 100% over 5 seconds, pausing at 100% throttle for half a second, and then ramping back down to 0% over 5 seconds. All right, let's take a look at the results of the throttle ramp. On the x-axis, we have time in seconds, and on the y-axis, we have RPM reported over bidirectional D-shot. And the throttle setting at each point in time is the same for all the ESCs. What we can see is that all the ESCs have pretty much identical RPM versus throttle curves up to about 40% throttle, and then they all start to kink over slightly and we get some differences in shape at high throttle. When we get to the peak RPM, so that's full throttle, 
we can see that there's about a 3% spread across all of these ESCs with an edge to the SpeedyB ESC, the BlueJ ESC, that achieves the highest RPM and the Mamba F60 Pro with the AM32 firmware achieves the lowest RPM at full throttle. This could be to do with firmware, but can also be due, due to differences in the ESCs as well. With the BlueJ SpeedyB ESC, we see a really interesting stepped response as we get to very high throttle. And it's quite apparent that it appears like we're running out of throttle resolution at the very top end. And that might lead to the throttle being a little bit less smooth, but that's probably not a big deal because we don't spend a lot of time that high in the throttle. It may also be due to the fact that this is the only 8-bit ESC that I'm testing today. All of the other ESCs are 32-bit, and so they may just have more resolution and have finer steps in throttle. We see that the throttle versus RPM curves are symmetric. They're identical on the way up and on the way down, which is good to see, and that um, they're pretty similar overall. So let's move on and look at the next test. The next test we're going to look at is the responsiveness of the ESC. And for this test, we're going to be doing throttle steps. We're stepping the ESC from 10% to 50% throttle and then back down to 10% again. And we're logging the RPM as the ESC accelerates and decelerates the motor. We're doing that 10 times and then we're taking the average of all 10 of those responses and plotting them so we can look at how fast the ESC is able to respond. All right, so let's take a look at the results of the ESC responsiveness test. What you're looking at here is time on the X axis in milliseconds and RPM of the motor on the Y axis. All of the throttle steps start at exactly zero milliseconds, and you're watching the ESC accelerate the motor from about 6,000 RPM to 21,000 RPM as fast as it possibly can. We have a white dashed line that indicates 90% of the RPM change on this step. So we're looking for the ESCs that are the fastest to get to that 90% line. The slowest ESC is the T-Motor F55 amp running BL Heli 32. You can see that it takes about 52 milliseconds to reach that 90% white line. Then we have all of the AM32 and BlueJ ESCs. They all take almost exactly the same amount of time. It's 44 milliseconds to accelerate up to that white 90% line. But the fastest ESC by some margin is the new FETTEC SFOC ESC. That reaches 90% in just 40 milliseconds. And if we think of those differences, you know, 52 milliseconds versus 40 milliseconds, that's a 12 millisecond difference, and that's a significant amount of delay. That's as much delay as you'll likely have on your filters or your RC link. So if you can pick an ESC that is significantly faster to accelerate the prop, that is going to make the quad feel more responsive. And I think pilots will be able to notice a difference with a difference of about 10 milliseconds in terms of how fast the ESC accelerates the prop, because we definitely have anecdotal evidence that there is a perceivable difference between um, video links with 30 and 40 milliseconds of delay. So I definitely think that it's worth having this extra responsiveness. And it's really impressive to see this prototype FETTEC ESC um, beating out all of the established competition. When it comes to deceleration, we can perform exactly the same analysis. But in this case, we find that all of the ESCs perform pretty much exactly the same when decelerating the motor, and there's no real difference. We do see a little bit more noise on the RPM signal at uh, lower RPMs for the FETTEC SFOC ESC, but this is prototype hardware, prototype software. So Felix is actively working on this, and I expect that this will probably be resolved long before the firmware is actually released, and I will verify that in future testing. The final test we're going to look at is the flywheel dyno test. And here we're accelerating the motor from 6 to 50% throttle, and we have a 100 kilogram millimeter squared flywheel attached to the motor. The ESC that's able to accelerate the motor more quickly with the flywheel attached is able to generate more torque out of the same motor and therefore is providing improved performance. And that's what we're going to be looking at with this test. This flywheel dyno test is probably the most challenging test for any ESC, and we can see big differences in performance between the different ESCs that we're testing. Again, we're looking at time on the x-axis in milliseconds and RPM of the motor on the y-axis. 
and all of the throttle steps are starting at zero milliseconds and then we're watching the ESC try and accelerate that motor with that flywheel attached as fast as possible. We can see that the BL Heli 32 ESC, the T-Motor F55 amp, is the slowest to accelerate that flywheel. That means that it's generating the least torque. Then we have the SkyStars KM55 amp AM32 ESC. This is only a 20 by 20 ESC, so it's a smaller ESC, and it's still able to accelerate that flywheel nice and quickly. Then we have the Speedy B55 amp Blue Jay ESC and the Mamba F60 Pro AM32 ESC. These are 30 by 30 ESCs and they are generating a lot of torque and they are accelerating that flywheel really quickly. But again, the standout performer here is this prototype Fettec 65 amp SFOC ESC. It's able to generate significantly more torque than all of the other motors and accelerate that flywheel that much faster. I hope you found those test results interesting. I am thrilled that we finally have a tool that allows us to see the differences between these ESCs really, really clearly, and we can start to understand which ESCs are performing better and which are performing worse. If you're interested to learn more about the FETTEC SFOC ESC and the totally new and unique approach that they are using to control the motor, then make sure you're subscribed because I'm gonna be doing a video on that very, very soon. We're gonna be deep diving on the technical detail behind their simple field orientated control that they're using to drive these motors. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying and I'll see you in the next one.